Hello everyone, my name is Jenny and welcome to our special tutorial in collaboration with Spitalfields City Farm. So the farm is one of my favourite places in London. It is so calming and so peaceful and full of the loveliest people. They do so much for the world around them. They have a community vegetable garden. They also work with the local schools to teach the children there about animals and nature. They rescue animals like hens and rabbits and guinea pigs and rehome them. And they also work to, tr um, to support the uh, Rare Breeds Livestock Conservation Trust. Today we're going to be drawing some of the newborn lambs on the farm. They are super cute. And this drawing tutorial is open and accessible to all ages, all abilities. All you're going to need is some paper, a pencil, possibly a pen and some watercolours as well, but you can work along in whatever media you have to hand. It should take about half an hour in total. And if you want to, you can pause or screenshot this video where we see the lambs to get your reference image, or we've got a downloadable pack of reference images available for you to use as well. So now over to Jenny on the farm to meet some of those lovely lambs. Uh, welcome to Spitalfield City Farm. We're a community farm in the heart of East London. We've been around since 1978 and we'd love to be here for the next 40 years. So these are Castle Milk Morrit sheep and lambs. So they're a rare breed of livestock. And there's a couple of things to look out for when you're drawing animals. I know these lambs are quite fast moving, but Try, as you're watching this, to think about the anatomy under all that wool. So think about the spine and the, the joints, so the shoulder blades and the pelvis. Think about the joints in the legs and the muscle structure that surrounds them. And try to break all that down into a series of simple shapes and lines. So also think about the shape of the skull and how wide set the eyes are. Have a look at the unusual shape of their pupils, which means they can see more. And then also have a little look at the relationship between the horns and the ears. Have a look at all the grass and the wildflowers that they're uh, nibbling on. And just take a little moment to study these lambs closely or take a screenshot and then we'll get going. So we're going to begin with a circle, which will be the head of the lamb. And we want to make sure that that is um, in a good place on our paper, just so we can be sure of the rest of the composition for the animal. Then we start with the spine line leading down from that circle. And we can start to use those circles and ovals to map out the muscle structure of the lamb. Nice big round circle for the belly as well. Yeah, just simple shapes for the ears. It's a good idea as well to measure within your image. So uh, I looked at the proportions between the, uh, the top of the head and the chin and saw that that was about the same from the chin to the, uh, the chest area. Sometimes I find it really helpful when drawing the sort of facial features of an animal to draw a little cross in the middle of the face. So the, uh, the, the horizontal line will constitute where the eyes will be, so that's the eye line. And then the line down the middle is just where the nose will be. And it just means that you can kind of make sure everything's in the right place. Keeping your lines really nice and faint at the moment because we will be taking those out. I found this lamb quite difficult actually. It's quite hard to make it look cute because it looks quite angry here at the moment. And when you're starting on the legs, it's a really good idea, as we were saying, to think about where the joints are within each of the legs. So think about where the leg will attach to the body, and so that's up where the shoulder blades are. 
and you can map those joints with uh, little points like I've done. And same for the back leg, so you can use that spine line to make sure your bottom is in the right place. <laughs> and then we will figure out what the back leg is doing. So the back legs of any kind of hooved animals often look very different to the front. So they've almost got this sort of backwards knee, which actually is their ankle joint. So pay close attention to the back legs and make sure you're getting everything in the right place. And then you can fill out any of the legs that you've, uh, you need to fill out. And then at the end you can just cross check your proportions, make sure you've got all of your little details in. One good thing is that we don't have to draw the hooves, the hooves are difficult, but they are very nicely hidden within the grass, so that's a good thing. <laughs> When you're working a little bit on the face, it's a good idea to really have a good look at where everything is. And if, if there isn't very much of that facial feature, say if you can't see very much of the nose or the eyes, then don't draw them in too much. And also what's really important is everything around the eyes as well as the eyes themselves. And so lambs and sheep have got really kind of heavy brow bones. Their eyes stick out quite a lot, so make sure you put those in. And they've got a really strong jawline as well. So that's just about enough details, I think, for now, before we move on to the pen. Oh, and don't forget the tail. Now I'm going to begin work with a Japanese brush pen. Now you can use any pen that you like really. I just quite enjoy this brush pen because it is um, really light and fluid, really good for gestural marks. And what I'm doing is just beginning to lightly kind of get a little bit of the texture of the wool of the sheep. I always think with, uh, with inks and, and brush pens like this that less is more, so, so just go a bit gently, gently to begin with. It's so good for getting all of that, the fuzzy fur. <laughs> So what I'm doing is just focusing on, on the texture as well and trying to make the marks um, that I'm making with the pen kind of emulate the texture of, of the little lamb. So I'm not necessarily doing a full outline, um, I'm using my pen quite quick and re with repetitive motions. Just free and easy really. also really fun for doing the grass and the leaves. So the next thing I'm going to do is switch to a bit of a fine liner pen and what I'm going to use this for is uh, some of the smaller finer details around the face because it's just a little bit easier to control than the brush pen. So what I've done is added in the pupils there, make sure they're nice and elongated. And now I'm going to use the pen in just a nice sort of repetitive line way, just to kind of 
start to show a little bit of the three-dimensionality of the face. Give some nice eyelashes, make them look very cute. That's it, just a few little extra bits around the nostrils. And then if you're happy and your ink is all dry, just take out all of those pencil lines so we can make way for the watercolour or any kind of colour that you want to put on. So now we'll begin with a bit of watercolour. And what I did is just select a few of the browns and the oranges and creams that make up the, the lamb's lovely coat and took a fairly broad brush with plenty of water. And again, in the same way as we use the pen, use your brush uh, in the same way to emulate that, that wool, that sort of, you know, little um, tufts and bulges of wool. You can use plenty of water to blend the colours together. And also sometimes I quite like using watercolour in quite a gentle way. So I, I'm not going to cover my whole picture of this lamb. I'm just going to apply it to the areas that I think are, are most important and most colourful. Always test your watercolour on the side of your paper. Well, you can use a separate piece if you like, which is probably a bit less messy, but it's always good to check on the colour before it goes onto your painting. You can keep building up the colour as you go, making sure not to overdo the painting. Make sure you fill in some of the shadows, so the areas where the lamb is most dark. So under the armpits, uh, the, the other legs. It just helps to give a real sense of three-dimensionality for, for your animal. You see, it's kind of... The colour is really bringing it to life and making it pop out of the page. I'm now going to move on to a finer brush. So this means I can get uh, a few more of the details. And with that I'm going to use that on the face. So the face is a lovely creamy colour around the eyes. And it's a lovely, lovely dark brown all the way down the centre of the nose and the head. Again, all I'm doing is using my brush strokes in the same direction as the wool and the fur is going. And remember, you can always add more, but you can't take it away as easily. So just go steady and gently build up your colours as you go. And you'll want to make sure that you uh, give those eyes a bit of colour. 
be careful in this point and always try and make sure you leave a little circle of white in the eye just to show a nice bit of reflection it makes the animal look lots more alive Don't forget your horns are a lot darker than the rest of the lamb. <laughs> and you can just pick out those last fine details and make sure you've got enough information within the colour. And then, right at the very end, this is the fun bit, just get a few different greens and uh, splosh them on. Making sure again you're always going in the same direction as the, 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 the grass or the leaves. Perfect. Lovely. But then of course, your lamb's gonna need its family around it. So you're gonna make sure you're gonna have to put some friends in that picture as well. So I'm gonna add a mama sheep a little bit further away in the background. I'm going to use all the same principles as I did before so starting with the the circle for the head and then the spine line and then the muscle structure ovals and circles exactly as we did before. Now I'm going to begin work with a Japanese brush pen. Now you can use any pen that you like really. I just quite enjoy this brush pen because it is um, really light and fluid, really good for gestural marks. And what I'm doing is just beginning to lightly kind of get a little bit of the texture of the wool of the sheep. I always think with, uh, with inks and, and brush pens like this that less is more, so, so just go a bit gently, gently to begin with. It's so good for getting all of that the fuzzy fur. <laughs> So what I'm doing is just focusing on, on the texture as well and trying to make the marks um, that I'm making with the pen kind of emulate the texture of, of the little lamb. So I'm not necessarily doing a full outline, um, I'm using my pen quite quick and re with repetitive motions. Just free and easy really. It's also really fun for doing the grass and the leaves. So the next thing I'm going to do is switch to a bit of a fine liner pen and what I'm going to use this for is uh, some of the smaller finer details around the face because it's just a little bit easier to control than the brush pen. So what I've done is added in the pupils there, make sure they're nice and elongated and now I'm going to use the pen in just a nice sort of repetitive line way just to kind of start to show a little bit of the three-dimensionality of the face and then if you're happy and your ink is all dry just take out all of those pencil lines so we can make way for the watercolour or any kind of colour that you want to put on and remember with anything in the background the further away it is the smaller it will be so make sure your perspective is is spot on with these background characters and it's also nice when you're putting something in the background, you know, to have a little bit of differentiation. So uh, different positions of the of the animals. You get to see the adult as well as the as the lamb. As you begin to start filling your background in, just remember that the further away the animals are as well, you might want to add slightly less detail just to make your front character lamb stand out a little bit more. So you can keep your painting really light and fresh. 
And now the very final stage, you can get on to adding your wildflower meadow and all of the grasses and everything that will connect the scene up. So make sure you use a variety of different greens here um, just to make the picture more interesting really. And again, your, your mark making with your brush can be really nice and loose just to make it look like they're yeah, ambling through a lovely meadow. It's always a good job not to do the uh, do the hooves of the animals. Sometimes they can be really tricky. So thankfully we have a lovely grassy meadow to, to hide those from that task. And you can add a few extra bits of grass here and there just to sort of connect up your scene and make sure they all look like they're in the same field together. And lovely. That's it, a nice springtime scene from Spitalfield City Farm. Happy with that? Well, thank you so, so much to Jenny for introducing us to her lovely lambs. I've so enjoyed drawing them and I really hope you have too. If you do happen to have a couple of extra pounds, I know the farm will be so, so appreciative of your donation, especially now where the farm is closed and they aren't able to do their usual fundraising activities. It's made things quite difficult. So if you are able to give and if you enjoyed the tutorial, please, please do. We, we'd really appreciate it from the bottom of our hearts. And that leaves me just to say, I really hope you enjoyed the tutorial and please share your drawings with us if you can. Just tag us on Facebook or Instagram. We'd love to see what you've done. And with that, I'll just say thank you again and take care and see you again soon. Hope you enjoyed uh, drawing our lovely cast milk white lambs today. <laughs> if you're able to and you want to support our conservation work and our community work, please, please consider donating. Even something like £5 will help buy the bale of hay and some feed for the animals. Every little helps.